multiplex sounds like some cool new movie theater. But really what it means is that we take a bunch of samples, such as DNA sequencing libraries, and we pool them together, we process them together, and then we demultiplex them, we demux them, we separate them back out, usually based on unique barcodes, so we know which, which results came from which samples. So you might see multiplex used in different contexts, but most frequently you're going to see it used in the context of next generation sequencing, um, things like DNA sequencing with Illumina. In these processes, you basically take a DNA and you, or you take RNA and you convert it into DNA, and then you're going to shear up or somehow else fragment that DNA into smaller pieces and sequence those individual pieces. In order to actually sequence those pieces, you're going to put adapters onto the ends. These adapters are going to let them bind to complementary sequences on the surface of a chip, and then when they're bound to that surface, you can make lots of copies of them. Now these adapters can also serve as a place where you can put barcodes. And so each of your samples is going to have a unique barcode. And by samples, we could be talking about um, like a library made from a different cell type or a different tissue or a different who knows what, but some unique sample. And each unique sample is going to have a unique barcode. And now what happens is that when that sequence is stuck on that chip and make, getting copies made of it, you also make a copy of that barcode. And this is going to be associated with the read copy, and so now you know which barcode was associated with which read. And if you know which barcode was associated with the read, you know which sample was associated with the read. Typically, with, these, um, with sequencing these days, you actually do a dual index. So on each side of your read, you're going to have one of the adapters. There are going to be different adapters on each side, um, but what happens is the read's going to be read like this, and it kind of like folds over into an arch, and then it binds on the other side, the other adapter binds, and things like this. And on each side, on each of those adapters, you can have an index. And this index is going to be unique to your sample. If you're using a unique dual index, each sample is going to have a different, um, a, a different index on each side that is totally unique to it. And this is going to make sure that you're getting all the reads are associated with the correct indexes and make sure that there's, because there's things like index high popping and things that can happen if you, um, if you have different, and if you have unique indexes, you're able to tell them apart. But anyway, so you have these indexes on either side. One is typically referred to as the I7 and one is referred to as the I5. And these are going to then allow you to identify the sample once you get all that data together. So for each of the reads, you have an associated indexes. And therefore, you're able to know which sample it came from. And this is, allows you to computationally demultiplex the samples. And you can pull a lot of different samples together. The number of samples that you have pulled together is referred to as the plexity. Um, and so you can have very complex um, plexity if you have a lot of samples pulled together. And you're able to pull a lot of samples together because these sequencing machines are really, really powerful. And typically, they're way more powerful than you would need for a single sample, which is good because scientists usually don't have just a single sample. Instead, you might want be wanting to sequence from different tissues or under different drug conditions, say. And so you're going to want to have a lot of different sequences read out, sample sequences read out, and you don't want to have to pay for a single lane or whatever for each of those things. And so by pooling them together, you're able to then say, time, energy, money, all of that various things, and still get enough results for what you need. That's the great thing about DNA is you can make lots and lots of copies of it. Um, so even if you have a small amount going in, you can get a large amount of data. And thanks to those indexes, you're then able to separate out what came from what sample. So multiplexing is really, really cool, and it's really, really helpful. Um, there are a variety of different strategies for multiplexing. Um, so like single indexes were like in the beginning, and then there were dual indexes, and then unique dual indexes, and the technology keeps just getting more complex so that you can do more of this multiplexing. As to the length of the barcodes, they're typically um, eight or 10 nucleotides long. So when we talk about these barcodes and the, and the adapters, we're really just talking about extra sequences that are on the end that are going to be the same for all of this, for each sample, they're gonna have the same, that same adapter. But then the rest of it is going to be unique. So you have the unique part and then the adapters on either side. The adapters themselves are going to have a generic part that lets them bind to the chip and has a site that you can use to sequence the primer. 
uh, sequence the index, and then they're also going to have that unique index. So there's some features in common, but then the, also the unique index that's going to be, again, specific for that particular sample.